Hello everyone, so in this uh, video we're going to talk about uh, the options panel for uh, for the My Theme Shop themes. Um, the options panel is generally speaking where you can control the various settings and, uh, and styles for uh, the theme that you have installed. Um, some of the options that you'll be able to choose from for example will be like including a logo design or uh, changing a banner image or adjusting fonts. Um, these are all things that can be changed from within the options panel. The options panel exists mainly so that we can allow people to change uh, things about their theme without having to uh, have people able to edit the code. Rather than have to go into the theme CSS and change something about a font, you can do it from a nice visual editor. And that's why we created the uh, options panel that we have. Uh, so there are a variety of different uh, options that you can choose from, but generally speaking, they're divided up into six different panels. The first is the general settings panel. The second is the styling options panel. The third is the single post settings panel. The fourth is the font settings panel. The fifth is the social buttons panel, and the sixth and last is the ad management panel. So starting with the general settings panel, there's a variety of things that you can set here, and these are tend to be things that are the same between any theme that you might use. Um, the first option that we'll talk about here is the selection of the logo image. The logo image is essentially what you want the, your, the logo or title of your site to appear. It's best if it's a transparent PNG file um, because that way there won't be a uh, contrasting background with the existing theme. Um, the size is specified within the options panel. It is 138 by 35 pixels. And all you have to do is simply enter the URL where you have uploaded your logo and then click the upload button. The next up is the favicon. A favicon is essentially what appears in your browser up at the top left where you would normally see, for example, in Chrome you might see a globe, or in Internet Explorer you might see the Internet Explorer logo. A favicon is a 16 by 16 pixel image that represents what your website is. And so most people will choose to do their logo for this. So all you have to do is enter the URL. It's the same thing for the, for the logo image. Just enter the URL into the box and click Upload. The next option is your FeedBurner URL. FeedBurner is a service uh, which is now owned by Google for allowing you to burn your feeds which lets users subscribe for updates whenever that way they can find out when you've posted new content on your blog a feed burner URL you can sign up for at feedburner.com and once you have created your feed you can simply enter the URL into the box and save the settings the next option is your Twitter username Twitter if you are not familiar with it is a microblogging service which allows you to essentially tweet little uh, snippets of whether it's a uh, an update or a new post or whatever to uh, to your followers there and allows people to stay updated and converse with each other so all you have to do there is enter your Twitter username that you've you, uh, signed up for on twitter.com and you can uh, go ahead and uh, enter that into the box and click save the next option is the excerpt length an excerpt is a the amount of text that you want to show that is used for some search engine management and as well as uh, posts excerpts on the on the front page. Uh, most people will usually use something like 65 characters. Uh, search engines are usually between 60 and maybe a little more depending, but uh, it's usually not a good idea to go too small because then people won't be able to get the the meaning of whatever the the excerpt is. And if you go too long, then it's a uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of having an excerpt. The next option is your footer copyright notice. You can uh, you can use an affiliate link or you can use um, whatever text you want there, but uh, this particular option mainly exists so you can put something like copyright 2012 mythemeshop.com or whatever your website is. The next option is header code. Uh, header code allows you to enter a, a snippet of code, usually JavaScript or something else, um, which you can place before the closing heading tag. Um, Things that usually have to go in this particular area are things like Google Webmaster Tools verification, uh, your buy sell ads, uh, type scripts, Alexa verification, or a uh, similar type uh, services such as that. The next option is footer code. 
footer code is very similar to header code, only this time it goes towards the end of the document. Um, footer code, you can uh, put various things in there, such as Google Analytics, stats, etc. Usually, advertising code for the, for the preloading goes in the header code, and statistics tracking goes in the footer code, because statistics have to load after the rest of your site has loaded. Next, you'll see three checkboxes uh, for enabling and disabling certain features. <coughs> The first feature is a uh, is a home page slider, and you may recognize these as a, a large featured image box area that automatically rotates between various images. Um, you can enable or disable this particular slider using this option. Um, the slider will usually show the three most recent articles from either the featured or the sticky articles categories, depending on which you have assigned. The next option is enable thumbnails on the home page. Uh, this option allows you to control whether or not there are small thumbnail images displayed on your home page as well as your archives page. There's an advantage to having thumbnails and that is it shows the user a, a, a sort of a preview of what kind of images are in the post and this can uh, generate a little bit more user attention. The disadvantage is you will be loading a lot more images onto your theme so for those of you who have uh, content heavy websites or are on a, uh, a limited server you may want to uh, uncheck this particular box. The third and final option here is pagination. Pagination is what you'll see at the bottom of many websites where there's a uh, ability to select from a page of, uh, of posts, of archived posts. Um, the standard variation it just allows you to view the next page of posts and the previous page of post but if you enable pagination using the option in the admin panel it allows you to select any page that you're interested in so instead of having to click through page one two three four you can actually just click the page four button at the bottom and it's a uh, it's a nice feature for usability however again it does slow your theme down uh, a little bit